serve. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth. Adore him. Yes, 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 yes. We serve a mighty God. And we have come into this house, gathered in his name to do what? To worship him. And we're going to worship him this morning in spirit and in power. Yes, sir. I hope you didn't come in here and you not ready to have a good time. I mean, it may be back late. You want to take your shoes off or do whatever you need to do. But we came in here to give God praise. He's been so, so good to us. Yes, he has. He's been so good to us. This is the day the Lord God has made. I need some rejoicing folks in the house today. Yes, we are. Yes, we was out of the house. We was out of the building for quite some time, wasn't we? And I, and I, I remember there was a time when I used to be like, oh, we got church soon. You know, and, 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 and I, got, I know I got to get up early for church in the morning. But now I wake up and I say, oh, I can't wait to get to church. Husband's family, keep the Hill family in your prayers and in your heart. My husband lost his fifth cousin in the Hill family during this pandemic. We buried his fifth cousin in less than a year's time. And so we just ask you, y'all, just to keep us lifted up. God is in control. Amen. He is definitely in control. Let us posture ourselves to pray. If you would, Sister Kalenza, if you would just play say this. Place today, Lord God, we just 
say yes. We say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. We say yes to your power. We say yes, Lord God, to, 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 to loving each other. We say yes, Lord God, to the anointing. We say yes, Lord God, to the blessing. We said yes, Lord. Whoa, well, we're, we're here to say yes, Lord. Whatever you're calling us to, Lord God, we say yes to it. Our spirit said yes, Lord. We say yes. Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. And there at the first verse you'll find these words. Sometime later God tested Abraham. And he said to Abraham, he said, here I am, he replied. And then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain, I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son, Isaac. And when he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. And on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. And he said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. And we will worship, and then we'll come back to you. And Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on the son Isaac. And he said he himself carried the fire and the knife. And as the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son Abraham replied, the fire and the wood are here. Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. And when they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. 
he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, where? Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do nothing, do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. And Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by his horns. And he went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called their place, the Lord will provide. And if you have a King James Version, it says Jehovah Jireh. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Amen. We're going to ask everyone to stand at this time for the Apostles' Creed. What do we believe in? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and he sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quickly the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Bless us, choir.
We're going to have now our morning welcome and then our announcements. Once again, 
build rap and build funding. Coming back louder and stronger than ever to fund the future of the breast cancer fight. Raising money to fund new research, providing 24-7 support for cancer patients, and giving access to life-saving screening. So let's join forces. Rally with us. Fundraise with us. The future is a world free from breast cancer. And that future is in our hands. Your fight is our fight. here for you that I definitely wanted to make sure that I share it with you from the American Cancer Society website. There's two websites. Now, I'm encouraging men and women, men and women. Uh, men, I'm encouraging you because breast cancer, it says, is not only a women's disease. In 2021, 2,650 men were diagnosed with invasive breast cancer and 530 men will die from it. So it's not just the women's disease. And if you uh, would take some time to look at the National uh, Breast Cancer Society website, but also the American Cancer Society, and you all, there are still great disparities in our community. First of all, I wanna share this with you. Breast cancer alone accounts for 30% of newly diagnosed invasive cancers in women. Together, the three most common types of cancer in women, breast, lung, and colorectal, account for 50% of all new cases for women. But this is what's startling you all. This is what's startling. It says that not all women have benefited equally from this progress. Non-Hispanic black women well, let, first of all, they have about 12% of women who are screened for breast cancer have a normal uh, mammograms, but only 5% of them have, uh, women have cancer. Now this is what I want you to hear. Non-Hispanic black women, that's us, at every age are more likely to die from breast cancer. The higher breast cancer death rate in black women in part reflects the higher number of diagnoses of triple negative breast cancer in black women. Black women are twice as likely as women of other racial and ethnic groups in the U.S. to be diagnosed with this harder to treat cancer. Black women do not, these are the reasons that we have the disparity. Black women do not have the same access to high quality cancer care compared to white women. And so you all know that you are fortunate enough, even though uh, we're right here in Hancock County, but, but to be within relative distance of one of the best cancer centers in the world, and that's right there in Augusta, Georgia. Uh, uh, the, the, the Augusta University is doing significant work in cancer treatment. If you don't feel that you're getting the care that you need in your community, take yourself somewhere else. Amen. And then it says they're more likely to be screened at lower resource and non-accredited facilities to go longer between mammograms. Get your, if you were of age, get your yearly mammogram. And to wait longer for a follow-up exam after getting an abnormal result, y'all. They're making amazing strides in breast cancer treatment, but you gotta detect it early. Do yourself checks. That's men and women. Do yourself checks and make sure that you get your yearly mammogram. I believe in Jehovah Rapha, Amen. that God is our healer. But I also believe that he uses doctors sometimes to do what? Heal us. And that's why he has endowed them with the wisdom that we have. Do we have any cancer survivors in the house? You don't have to stand up and say anything, but just let us know you're here. Just let us know you're here. All right, all right, all right. We're sending you our love from all over this place. We see you all love for all over this place. And to that beautiful, beautiful daughter of yours, Cassandra, and her 
of faith. What a woman of God. What a woman of faith who has walked this thing out. We are sending her our love. Tell her we love her. We love her. We're sending love to Sister uh, Louise Chapman, who's usually here, but she's a survivor. And we're sending her our love this morning. There's going to be a tray out, stewards, for, our, for breast cancer research. Um, there's lots of ways for us to donate. We're going to ask that you put a tray out for breast cancer research. Uh, what a nice today that Sister Teresa Jackson has been confirmed as the president of our Missionary Society. We're so excited about that. We're so excited about that. We got a lot of work to do taking care of this community, but I believe we got the right person in place. And then you all, there will be a meeting, and this goes against everything I love, y'all. It, it is it's really gonna depend on the anointing today. If I can even come down, if God takes ushers me up so high, can I come down to do this? But this goes against everything I believe. But we had a, a magnificent meeting on last week, um, on the previous week, our church conference. It was awesome. And because we had waited so long, there were a number of issues that we had to deal with and a few um, that I did not deal with. Some because our trustee president had to work that evening and she could not, I mean our trustee chairman had to work that evening and she, Sister Pizza could not be with us. But there's a couple of things that need to be addressed immediately um, and I have an idea to present to you all. So we're not gonna meet in the building because Brother Ficklin should be, uh, he should be uh, fogging the building. We're gonna meet uh, right out here, right out here under the awning, um, briefly under the driveway, and we'll meet there briefly. Anybody, it does all church officers should be there, but anyone who wants to meet and have a part in this conversation, I encourage you to do so. Y'all know I don't believe in meeting after church. I believe that we should go and the church usher on high. I believe that we should go with Shekinah glory. And I don't believe in meetings, and I would not ask you to meet unless it was important. And then let me remind you, if you want to participate in the welcome, um, if you want to participate in our welcome, and we did not include you, we're giving you an opportunity this Sunday to do so. All right, and, 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 and but Sister Hood, is there anything that I left out? Anything? Make sure our uh, stewards will have an offering of a plate for uh, donations to the Breast Cancer Society, and they even have a place on their website where you can make the donation, uh, or the American Cancer Society, and that just covers everybody. Um, we're going to ask our stewards to come at this time with the tithes and, and receive our tithes and offerings.
God to praise him. If a baby can praise him, we ought to be able to praise him. If a baby can shout out his name, But I thank God that there are some disciples on the battlefield doing good work, doing the Lord's work, making sure that the church goes beyond the walls and that we do real ministry in the community. And so uh, this, this, this church, this is just a building and the church is in us. That's right. and, and, and if we're gonna be irrelevant, church in this community, if we're going to make a difference, we got to do work beyond the walls. And so there are a lot of efforts, unseen, unspoken efforts, that are going on in this community. Um, and I thank my sister pastors. I, it ain't all just some sister stuff, but I thank my sister pastors, uh, 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 the Reverend, and lately I've been going to call her Dr. Akita Baywell. I don't know why, but we I think we headed in that direction, but Dr. Reverend Akita Mayweather uh, and, 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 um, and um, Reverend um, Darby, or Re Reverend Harper. Um, so uh, those are some of the pastors that I knew, some, some other pastors in the community have come to the table, but Sister Chapman has been diligent in her work in the community, and we just wanna uh, have an opportunity to share this morning. Come in your own way, Sister Chapman. Good morning. I know the pastor has talked about breast cancer. Um, I just want to speak a little bit about that before I get into the presentation that I have. Um, my niece um, has been diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, she's getting ready to go through her last phase of chemo on November the 1st. And I also had a best friend that um, diagnosed with breast cancer that they were diagnosed a month apart. So she's finished with her chemo and she's waiting now for surgery. And they tell my niece that so far until they can she can go through this last treatment, they don't know what the extent of her surgery will be, but I count it as all joy. And and I like her spirit. She was gonna come today, but you all know with that chemo, it makes you feel bad. So she got this morning and she wasn't feeling good. So I told her just stay on at home. But I know God is in charge. He's going to bring us through this. I also had a first cousin who died from breast cancer. Where it started out with breast cancer and it metastasized to other parts of her body. And when it got to her brain, that's when she died. And I also understand that Jamika's grandfather died from cancer as well. So, you know, and that's leading to what I'm saying about this presentation that I'm doing. Um, I'm a part of the faith-based community with Akita Mayweather and several other churches is involved, Pastor. Um, 
fixing to be on the line. Stacy, Johnny, and myself, we went to this workshop. And one of the things that can lead to breast cancer is our diet. This, you know, all these chemicals that is being put in the food now. Amen. And you know, back in the day, we black people didn't, you rarely heard black people dying from cancer, right? Because everything we ate basically was raised at home. And so that's why some of the churches has agreed to do the garden. And I did volunteer St. Paul to do the garden because they wanted to do it on the property of their church. They were gonna put a fence around it. Somebody had to be responsible for the upkeeping of the garden. And I know my dad, Al, is not able to do all of that now. Not down here near this house too. But the garden they was doing it is to give the produce to the people so they can eat healthy. So y'all, we have to start eating healthy. Healthy eating is not eating one meal a day. Or you would not eat in the morning, don't eat during the day, you wait till the afternoon and you eat and you eat all of this food at one time. You are defeating the purpose because you're, as we get older, and talk about myself, your metabolism slows down, so you cannot burn that energy. So we have to be careful what we intake. Even Jocelyn Huss says that people think that a salad is only going to be ate at lunch in the afternoon, but actually you eat a salad in the morning time. It's healthy. It's what we put on our food. So we got to eat healthy. And another thing, we need to start exercising. So I would love that we could get together on a Saturday morning or any morning, any other day that is convenient that we can walk around this church. It's like a track or we can walk down the road. There's another way of uh, exercising this to help with your blood pressure. I have high blood pressure. I'm on medicine for uh, high cholesterol. I take, actually take two medicines for blood pressure. So when you walk in that help lowers your blood pressure. So it's all about eating healthy, changing our lifestyle. It's about changing our lifestyle. The doctor can give us the medicine. God worked through the doctor with this medicine. I know for, speaking for myself, if I wasn't on this medicine with the help of God and the way I eat, I would probably be on poor medicine. I'm just being honest because I don't eat right like I should. I'm getting better. And diabetes, diabetes, if you're a diabetic, you need to eat five, three meals plus three snacks a day. Because you're not, you're hurting your body. And then they say, we can't have sweet. If you have it, you have to do it in moderation. My first cousin, she's a bad diabetic, and her doctor told her that she got to have some sugar in her diet. Because it's something about that, uh, I forgot what they call it, I don't know a whole lot about diabetes. It is not it working against more against her than for her. And she he told her do not drink diet soda. If she got to drink, then drink a regular soda and drink a little of it. Don't drink that because that saccharin and that diet soda have more sugar than a regular soda does. So we read all of this stuff, but we got to use our common sense and we got to believe in God. So if you all want to walk, we can get together on the phone and we can decide what day we want to walk. And I had said that I was gonna tell Miss Janice since I'm living down there by now, like in the evening time, we can walk from her house to the fork of the road like so many times. That's the building up, building you up. It helps your heart as well. You got to keep that heart pumping freely. It prevents blood clot. You, you have to, uh, eat the, the basic thing is changing our lifestyle. And then one other thing, I know y'all heard about the money, especially people living in Hancock County, about how much money that that we have gotten from when the Biden gave, uh, they gave so many, um, 1.6 million dollars. Uh, they have gotten eight already. We don't even know where that eight went to yet right now. Some of it was for the housing. The reason that we didn't, uh, the ones that fill it out at this church, they didn't need no housing system because their house was okay. But you got elderly people that live in their houses where they got leaks in it. And when you got leaks in your house, it is mold and mildew is building up. And that making them sick. And there are very few people that have gotten like $10,000 to do some repairs on their house. My aunt, she wasn't one of them. She need a wheelchair chair ramp because she has dementia and she don't have, a, she got a wheelchair so she don't have a ramp to get in the church. She need a roof on her house. So a lot of this money has not been allocated like it should. So then the last thing I want to say is coming up voting time. 
they telling us that we need to make sure our name, not only here in Hancock, everywhere, we need to make sure our name is still on the registration to vote because they are taking off our name. They are trying to figure out a way to keep us from going back to the whole voting. And let me tell you, what we did before, we need to do it again. Go out and knock. If you got to take you some water, St. Paul have a van. If you need a ride, I'm speaking to the people on social media, everywhere right now. If you need a ride, let us know. We will come take you and take your own water. They can't prevent you from bringing your own water. They trying to deter us from voting, but God, there's a right that our great great grandfathers and mothers and our foreparents have paved the way for us, and we need to utilize that. Go out and exercise your right to vote from that. Whatever age you can vote, start voting now. That is your right. Don't let them take everything from us. Some of the things we may not have control, but we got control over if we go to that poll or not and vote. Vote for the person of your choice. People can make us promise, but when they get there, they do not fulfill those promises. Number one, they shouldn't make the promise because one person cannot do it all by themselves. It got to be a team. Say, I will try. I will try. I will do my best. But don't make these promises that we know we cannot keep. So, y'all, let's start eating healthy and living healthy. And thank you. Amen. St. Paul is, cares about the holistic person. This ministry is not just, just for your spiritual well-being, but it's also for your holistic well-being. Maggie, just set a date, and on, on set a date, probably on a Saturday morning. Yeah, but Saturday we can come, morning. And it'll kick off our walk. Y'all plan out the route. We might have to have one of them gentlemen to watch us so there's something wild get behind us. We can get, <laughs> we can get free. But uh, plan a day and we'll do that. I will let you know that uh, St. not St. Paul, but Hancock County was awarded $1.6 million in federal funds to improve housing in this community. On the $800,000 of that so far has been, uh, they will receive, uh, uh, has been given, right? They got and, and they had to have that has to be uh, dispersed by December. That is to repair homes and uh, renov do renovations uh, for homes in this area. You all, you know how the announcement was made to the community via Facebook. What does that look like for our seniors who don't even know what Facebook is? And those are the ones who are in need in our community. Now the next $800,000 is gonna be dispersed, but if you know somebody in this community that needs assistance, please make sure that Sister Chapman gets their name and their address. I know that you all have done all your surveys, right? They but we don't. Them. They still they take still them. Take them. Please still make sure she gets their name and the address. We're going to do everything that we can to make sure that these funds are appropriate and fair, and that people get the help that they need. And so that is very important, you all, that you all know that there are still some things that are not being carried out justly. And so the church must have its voice. And so the church must do what it does to make sure that all of the people in the community, not the ones that just show up on Sunday, but everybody is taken care of. And yes, we do all, I'm making a lifestyle change right now. Uh, and I thank God for it. And, and it is God that's keeping me too, because I show want a lot of stuff that I've been denying myself. But I know it's God that's keeping me. But I do want to live a good quality life. This life that God has given me, I don't take it for granted, and I do want to live a good quality life. So I got to do better than I've always taken care of myself, and I'm committed to that. And we can do that if we help each other. We can't do it alone. We got to help each other. Amen. Amen. Bless us, choir. <laughs>
it's going to be all right, but because we, we know that God is calling you to a different season in your life, but you going to be this.
just one person to me. You are yes, God, God is not just the head of my life. God is He, he didn't just, he just, he, he just 
didn't create us and forget about us, y'all. Amen. He didn't just form us from the dust of the earth and forget about us. Or he, he, he knows our name, and all of you here today, he will definitely say that I knew you before I formed you yeah. in your yeah. mother's womb. So he knows you by name, and so he calls Abraham by name. Then Abraham says to God, here, I He says that to God. But then God makes a startling request of Abraham. He said, Abraham, I need you to take your son. The one that you love, your only son, and and, 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 and and don't misread the text because we know that that's not Abraham's only son. We know that there was one before him, Ishmael. That's a whole other sermon in itself. But we know that this this Isaac was the son of the promise. Yes, yes. He was a son that you all would have called a miracle baby. Yes, yes. He was a son that God promised Abraham when he called him. He was a son that, 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 that would lead to the, to the prophetic prophecy when he says that I'll make a great nation of you. Yes. So this is the promised son. And so he says, I, I need you to take that son. The one Isaac, and go to a region in a place called Moriah. And he said that when you get there, y'all, this is the thing that this is the thing that baffles me. He says, when you get there, he said, I need you to sacrifice this child. He said, I need you to make a burnt offering unto me on a mountain that I will show you. God asked Abraham to do such a tragic thing. What do we do, church, when God Tells you to do something that does not make sense. What do we do when God tells you to do something that does not make sense? It didn't make sense that God would, 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 would do an extraordinary thing and when Abraham and Sarah was way past childbearing years, Sarah had to be in her 90s, he would bless them with a son uh, uh, Abraham had to be oh, over a hundred. He would bless him with a son. And now he said, I need you to sacrifice. Yes, yes. What do we do when God tells us to do something and it doesn't make sense? Mm -hmm. Some of us have been there. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you to bless somebody mm -hmm. when you don't even know how you're going to make it. Amen. Amen. He'll require you to remain humble in the presence of your enemies. Mm -hmm. Somebody going off on you. Somebody attacking you. But God is saying, uh-uh, don't fight. Mm -hmm. right. Let that go. You want to tear the head off, but God says, no. Mm -hmm. This yes, better not yours. Yes, right. It's the Lord. What do we do when God tells us to do something that doesn't make sense? He'll make you be the caregiver for the parent that didn't even give you anything, that didn't do anything for you. Yeah, yeah. What do we do when God tells us to do something that does not make sense? What we do is we trust God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I know most of you know it and you love it. It says, trust in the Lord with all, all your heart and do what? Lean not to your own understanding. You may not understand that why God is saying that you got to take care 
care of the father who never called you, the father who never provided for you, the father who never showed any love to you. But when it gets sick and when it gets down, you're the only person that he got and God says, and yes, you're going to take care of him. Doesn't make sense, but God said so. You just have to trust God. Amen. That's what Abraham did. Abraham trusted God, and the scripture says that, hey, hey, he didn't wait. God said it. The, 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 the text says that Abraham didn't wait. He said, Abraham got up early in the morning, loaded up his donkey, loaded up his donkey, got two of his servants and his son Isaac, and they headed to this place that God had told him to sacrifice Isaac. That God had told him to take his son's life. And he didn't wait about it, y'all. He didn't get up early. You know, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't call around the folk and say, oh, what you think I'm going to do? This don't make no sense. Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to think about it a few more days. This, after God told him what to do, he got up early in the morning. And he began to set out on this mission. Amen. But then it says on the third day. Mm. On the third day. Yes, yes. I love the third day. Yes, that's yes. Right. They on, the, on, on the first day, they, 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 they hung our Lord. Yes. yes. And they stretched him wide. And they put nails on his hands and his feet in the crown of thorns. Yes. On his head, but on the third day. Yes. He got up with all power. All power. In his hands. And on the third day, y'all, they said that Abraham was, was, was traveling by donkey. Well, with a stuff on the donkey, so they probably was walking. And they took him three days to get there. So he had three days, y'all, to change his mind. Three days. He could have said, I can't do this, God. He could have said, Lord, take this cup from me. He could have said, I, 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 this is too much for me. But for three days, he went on his way, and he did not falter. When God tells you to do something, when God tells Amen. you, you know you got to pay your light bill. But God said, I need you to give that woman over there $50. You better write that $50. Because that's what God said. Amen. 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 You don't know how you're going to 
pay that bill. You don't know how you're going to pay that bill when God tells you that you got to bless somebody. But guess what? You know who God is. And when you know who God is, you can know by faith and not by sight. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm going over there. And I'm going to do everything that God said. But I ain't just coming back by myself. I'm coming back with my child. Hallelujah. He said, I'm coming back with my child. It made me think of so many times in my life when I had to walk by faith and, and, and not by sight. Thought about surgery was so severe that they never even closed up the incision. They said that we we're going to leave it open just as in case we got to go back in. Now I had a previous surgery you all and I got septic from the previous surgery. Meaning the, I got an infection in the hospital and the infection got in my bloodstream, and my organs start doing what? Getting ready to shut down. And so the doctors had to rush me to the hospital. I got a call on my way to work one day, and the doctor said, you sick. He said, you hospital sick. He said, how did you even make it to that job? I told him, I said, I'm strong, I'm Harriet Tubman strong. All right. He said, all right, but you need to be in the hospital. He said, call your family and tell them that we're going to meet at my office and then we're going to put you in the hospital. He said, your white blood cell count is over 10,000. And he said, we got to prepare for surgery. He said, do you have a surgeon? And I started to tell him, Dr. Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Dr. Jesus. But he said, if you don't mind, he said, I'm going to offer you my surgery. He said, but we got to take care of this right away. And while we were in the hospital, there were days they were talking about blood transfusions. They were talking about bagging me. And they were talking about all of these different things, y'all. But I felt the spirit of death come into my hospital. I felt, I felt them come into my hospital room. But I turned my face against the wall like this time.
You can say I ain't worried about this sickness because God gonna heal me. Yeah. So it is that Abraham said, now we going over here and both of us coming back. Amen. So Abraham took the wood and put it on Isaac. And then he carried the fire and the knife. Mm. And as the two of them were going together, Isaac spoke up to the dead and he said, Yes, son. He said, You got the fire. You got the wood. Right here. Mm -hmm. But where is the light mm -hmm. for the sacrifice? Mm -hmm. And Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the offering. Mm -hmm. Now Abraham knew that Isaac was the light. Abraham knew that God had called him to sacrifice his own son. Yes, yes. But Abraham said, God will provide the lamb for the sacrifice. He was walking his son to his death. He was walking to his darkest hour. He was walking him through. Some of y'all have had to walk with some folks in the oh, world. Some of y'all may be walking with somebody right now. You may be walking with somebody who's sick right now. Yes, yes. And the sickness is terminal. You may be walking right now with somebody who, who has Alzheimer's or dementia. You, 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 you may be walking with somebody right now who's about to lose their house, who's yes, about to lose yes, their car, yes. who can't pay their bills. Yes. You may be walking with them right now. Don't try to figure out what's the right thing to say to them. Don't try to figure out how you can comfort them. Do like Abraham say and say that, I don't know what's going on, but the Lord right we will We always try to make people feel better. We can't make people feel better. Only God can make me feel better. Was a ram. We 
thank God for a ram in the bush. Amen. Yes. There in the bush was a ram. Caught in the bush by his home. And he went over and he took the ram and made him the sacrifice. Thank you. I tell you that we thank God for rams in the bush. Amen. They were about to repo your car. But God. The job was going to lay you off. But God. You couldn't afford your medicine. But God. You were going to have to drop out of school. But God. Everything around you was falling apart. But God. The one you love walked out on you. But God. Your friends turned their back on you. But God. Yes, yes. I thank God for a rain in the bush. I thank God for being God. I thank God for being Jehovah child. Chase me because I chase her. 
People are always trying to get rich. I'm sharing something with you today that's been powerful over my life. The minute I stopped chasing money and started chasing God, God knew that he could trust me with the what? With the money. With the universe. I don't argue with nobody about no money. If you don't want to give me what I deserve, don't worry about it. God will do it. I don't argue. Somebody, my, 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 my God child called me because he was trying to negotiate his salary on the job. I said, don't argue with them about that salary. I said, whatever they decide on receiving, and guess what? God's going to give you the increase. Amen. I said, if they don't want to increase you, God will put you somewhere where they do Amen. Amen. I said, we don't chase money, money chases us. And so I'm sharing with that with you today. My life is, I understand now that God is my provider. Yes, he is. So I don't beg nobody about no money. You give it to me, you do. If you don't, you don't. Because guess what? Every time I turn around, God is doing what? Blessing me. Amen. God is blessing me. Y'all, I go to school. My school costs $7,000 for one semester. Online. Totally distance learning. I said, oh, I ain't gonna do anything. I ain't gonna go back to no debt by no school. God said, look at a bird with his money. Guess what the CME church had? They paid $3,500 of my education. Glory. It wasn't nobody but God. Nobody but God. Because I said, oh, boy, I'm signing up for this. Right. I'm thinking that they're going to cost $3,000 all together. But the CME church paid half of my tuition. Right. Right. And so nobody does it but God, right? It ain't, ain't nobody but God. God is, who is he to you? God is Jehovah. Jireh. Yes. Amen. Yes. Let us stand where we are. Let us stand where we are. Because we want to spend these holidays with each other. 
So we're gonna ask you, if you want to be a part of our welcome video, please see Sister Megan, and we're gonna be briefly under the awning, briefly under the awning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you, Lord God, for being our Jehovah driver, our provider, Lord God. And as we leave this place, Lord, we're not leaving you. We're taking you with us, Lord. We're taking you with us into our homes, on our jobs, and into the community, Lord. And we're taking along with that your love, your peace, your, 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 your provision, and your promises. We thank you, Lord God. Now we ask, Lord, that you, with your unabiding love, would rest rule and abide with each and every one of us. Keep us in perfect peace. Let your love surround us and your angels minister to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say,